Thank you, Steph. Good afternoon, everybody. Uh, I'm going to talk to you today about um, trying to make sense and putting all this data together. Um, we focus a lot about, you know, a lot about using these you know, for test creation and administering tests and uh, psychometrics, learning. We were putting these pieces together, doing that. This is this is. I will admit, this is very nerdy. Um, you know, but but that's okay. Uh, we're going to get into some some stuff that I think is helpful. Uh, if you're if you've never used exam software before, or you're in you, know, you use it now, just some kind of best practices that we do and, and making our lives you know pretty easy um, when using it. Just a little bit about me. Um, I, I I've been a Catholic for 12 years, uh, and I'm 2006. Um, I've taught except for grammar school, um, so I teach at I own, I teach at St. Peter's, and I've learned both St. Peter's. Um, Burton Catholic is in Oradell, New Jersey. Um, that, uh, little five all boys. Or depending on the level. Uh, and our tuition is approximately $16,000 a year. Um, like I said, we've been a laptop school since 2002. Um, our freshman, sophomores, we're in the middle of a Mac. So we're going from Lenovo to Apple. So our freshmen and sophomores have MacBook Airs and iPad Minis um, with three years of Apple Care on both. Uh, that $16,000 tuition does not include the, the roughly $1,600 cost for these two devices. Our juniors and seniors were phasing out the Lenovo's. They have tablets. Um, those are on their way out. So the latest in another two years will be is will be full blown two to one. Uh, all our students, all our faculty, uh, with MacBooks and iPads. Uh, we're also a, a Google app school. Uh, we've been a game school for three years now, and that's an important piece of the puzzle. Um, before we even were looking at exams often and, and you know changing our learning management system, we gave every kid an email, um, a Google email, because we felt that they needed to a have something clean they could use for colleges to communicate with the outside world, but also we didn't have to keep asking them what is their email address uh, if they change their email address. We knew from day one. This is your email address, and that will stay with you, you know, past your graduation. But we knew who you were, uh, and if we need to email you something, we have that, that, that ability. But that's very important when you start to talk about exams, often Blackboard and how we're tying stuff in. We have a direct means to communicate with the students, and it's something that we can control. Right. So the players in all this, um, we. Um, We've been using uh, PowerSchool as our student information system. Um, and I'll show you a timeline on the next slide. Um, PowerSchool is our student information system. Uh, this year, we started using Blackboard Learn as our learning management system. We started with ExamSoft last March um, with our goal that we would administer all of our approximately 5,000 exams online, which we did. Um, and Authentica Solutions is our PowerSchool to Blackboard synchronization. And in order for you to truly get the, um, how ExamSoft fits into this, I have to digress for a few minutes to talk about PowerSchool and Blackboard um, because those are the other principal players. So you could substitute your SIS for PowerSchool, uh, your LMS for Blackboard, um, but I just want to give you an idea this is how, you know, how we do it. Um, we, in 2001-2002, we started with Redeker, which is uh, built a program called Administrators Plus. That was our student information system. And we used that for a long time. We were early pioneers with Edline, which is now owned by Blackboard for our LMS. We used electronic grade books in 2004, 2005. So, and we've been using ExamView, which was a, a computer-based testing program since 2004. We've, we're no strangers to any of this. Uh, in 2013, we started to use PowerSchool. Uh, ExamSoft, I said, was March, and then Blackboard Learn replaced uh, Edline uh, this past September. Right? Now, the two things we had in mind in terms of, you know, first of all, computer-based testing—that was that was a, a big goal for us. 
Um, Blackboard is, is, we're trying to get Blackboard to be the place to go for everything, for your course content, for your grades, all in one spot, so that our parents and our students aren't looking in three different places, you know, for what's my grade and what's my homework, right? And then number two, most importantly, anything, anything we buy, whether it's SIS, LMS, CBT, it has to have the ability to talk to one another, right? We were not interested in a product that we would have to input anything manually, or we couldn't synchronize data back and forth, right? So that that was critical, absolutely critical for us um, in looking at all these different products. Um, and I said this in my last webinar in July, um, our, our, our underlying theme too is that you're not going to blame the computer, you're not going to blame my department or ExamSoft for any problem you're having with ExamSoft or synchronizing or whatever because we, we're giving you all the tools and all the training and everything that you need to, you know, to whether you're student or teacher to get your, your task accomplished. So, one of the things we have to define, um, there's two main things we have to look at when moving our data back and forth. Um, the first thing is, what, what's a student? Okay. Um, PowerSchool defines a student uh, with a four-digit student number. Uh, that's in the top left of the screen. Um, every student gets a unique number. When we, this is the same format that Redeker used for Administrators Plus. I just, when we migrated to PowerSchool, we just kept the same format it's a, uh, a continuous number. Uh, right now, our, our, our numbers are in the, like the low 5,000s. Um, so every student gets a unique parascool number when we create them, either when they register um, you know, or before their first day of school, they get this unique number when they're put into parascool. Um, what will happen is that number is the same number that's in Blackboard. Okay? Blackboard looks for a student ID. It, it needs to uniquely identify each student. It's the same number as parascool. Okay? And then ExamSoft, the same thing looks for a student ID number. That's also the, the same number. Okay? Why this is important is I'll show you in a, in a couple of slides. Um, but that's the main way when we go to synchronize data, we've got, we're all talking about the same student. Okay? So when I push student data from PowerSchool to Blackboard, when I push from Blackboard to ExamSoft, when I pull ExamSoft grades back in the Blackboard, we're all looking at that student ID. So that's something that requires some thought, you know, if you are, certainly if you're beginning to deploy, if you've got a new product you're deploying, it's a piece of cake, but if you've already got stuff in place, you really need to think about, are my students defined the same way in all three of my systems, SIS, LMS, and CBT, okay? The next part that's equally as important is a course, okay? So how do I link my courses together? Now. PowerSchool defines a course as a, a course number um, dot section. So in this case, this is English 110, uh, English 1 CP section 3, 110.3. Right? So I really kind of don't have a, um, a choice with PowerSchool. This is how I do it. Now you could add, you can make, put letters inside of your course number, whatever. Um, but each course needs to be uniquely identified with a course number and with a section number. Okay. Blackboard, um, the Blackboard default for a term or for a course is the, the school year with an underscore the course number, underscore the term ID, and if you're a PowerSchool user, this year 2500 is a full year course, 2501 is a fall semester course, 2502 is a spring semester course, you know, depending how you do things, if you do it in quarters, trimesters, whatever, and then underscore the section number. Okay. So right away, I had a course that was different in um, in PowerSchool and Blackboard. So when we worked with Authentica over the summer to synchronize these two, we had to make sure that our courses looked the same, okay? And that one understood the other, okay? So Authentica knows, or Blackboard knows when to, um, what fields to look at in PowerSchool to make sure they're pulling the correct courses and whatnot over. Now, ExamSoft, we originally started off with the, the same format, the 110.3, because we implemented exams off before Blackboard. So we start the school year and we're, we're looking to put in the, the building block for ExamSoft into Blackboard so I can synchronize the two. And I'm looking at the course ID and the course IDs don't match. Blackboard has the format you see on the screen here, um, but the ExamSoft format was the one that was in PowerSchool. So now I'm, I'm, I'm stuck. Okay, I've got roughly 
200 and let's say 50 sections across the board uh, in my school of, of, of different sections of different courses and whatnot. Um, my option at that point, because I'd already populated exam software this school year, was to edit them by hand, which we did. You know, my, my team went through in about a day, and we, you know, we all took a couple and we we set them up with this format, so we could get Blackboard and exam soft to talk. Okay, because again, going back to that goal, I didn't want to every time a student changed schedules or entered, you know, you know, transferred in the building or whatever. I was not about to put all this stuff in by hand. Okay, so that was that was really a, a, a key. Like I said, it, it took us a while. Um, to go back to do the course IDs, but it wasn't earth shattering. I had some help from, you know, from the people at ExamSoft, that, you know, guiding me where to, you know, what do I want to change, how do I want to do it, and it was just a matter of just doing it. Right? Um, so while this matters, every day between one and four o'clock, PowerSchool updates Blackboard. So it's student data, staff data, course data, and most importantly, student enrollment data um, gets published to Blackboard. Okay, and I'm going to show you that in a minute. Uh, we have to manually upload our parents and guardians, but whatever we change in PowerSchool today goes to Blackboard tomorrow morning between 1 and 4 a.m. Okay? So this sets the stage for ExamSoft. Right? So now I've got um, PowerSchool data, I put it in one spot. Blackboard then takes all that data overnight, and I'm, now Blackboard's populated. So that, that synchronization, the last one, the enrollment data, happens somewhere between 3.30 and 4 a.m. Okay, so then at 5 a.m. Um, when I'm, you know, when I'm shaving, when I get up and shave, I see my email that comes from ExamSoft that the building block is complete. All the stuff from Blackboard has gone up to ExamSoft. Okay, what I'm most interested in is this data. Okay, this is a student's um, courses on Blackboard. Okay, so this enables me to then populate ExamSoft with student rosters, who's taking what course, if there's been any changes. This student has had schedule changes. He dropped three courses. He dropped um, Physics CP in, in exchange for Physics Honors, and he had to change uh, his homework because they're all tied together. Fine. I didn't have to do this by hand. Okay, This is one student with one course change. It was the same period. Um, there are times where if a student changes a course for whatever reason, I might have to change three, four, or five sections to make the new schedule work. Okay? Multiply that on maybe the first day of school by if I've got 20 kids changing courses, there's no way I'm going to remember all this stuff. So having this here was absolutely critical. Having this system synchronizing was critical. I want my teachers to be able to use exam soft on the first day of school, and if I don't have a populated, they can't. You know, for the first couple of weeks, I was doing a, uh, a file, if I was lucky, once every two to three days. Okay? I got teachers telling me, well, this kid isn't in the class, this kid should be in the class, he's not, so forth. We need to get this figured out. You know? So the building block, the, the Blackboard building block for ExamSoft made perfect sense because every day it kicks out that new data. Right? And now I don't hear any complaints of, oh, I can't take my test, I'm not in the class. The worst case is that you transfer in today, you won't go up. To Blackboard and ExamSoft till tomorrow morning, so you're we're at, you know you're worse you're a day behind, right? But certainly not the end of the world, as opposed to potentially waiting two or three days, or if I missed it, if I was doing it by hand and I missed the class, okay? Um, this is critical. This is critical because again, it sets the stage for ExamSoft. I don't I don't touch ExamSoft. I don't go in and I don't add kids. I don't add um, I don't add. Um, uh, courses. I don't add, you know, change schedules. It's all done for me, okay? and it's and it's like clockwork. It's right, you know, five o'clock in the morning. Every morning, right after the Blackboard update, it goes. Okay. Um, like I said, five a.m. Um, is when I, I push that out. I make sure that it's got the the latest Blackboard, um, the latest Blackboard uh, information. So that goes up, and then ExamSoft is ready to go. Okay. The only thing that I do uh, manually is the the teachers. Okay, I've got I, I have roughly 60 teachers in my building. Um, there's really not a lot of changes with them, so I generally will not um, um, force changes from Blackboard to ExamSoft uh, with my teachers. I just synchronize the students. Teachers I'll do by hand because uh, that that's easy enough. Um, we've got a bunch of kids that do extended time. 
that stuff I manage by hand. Um, there's maybe 40, 45 kids, um, so that's not, you know, that's not something I need to, to worry about happening, you know, uh, synchronously. That's something that I can do by hand. That's easy enough. All right, so the, the building block allows me to, you know, decide who I'm going to include and exclude. I just do for the students because really that's, that's what makes the most sense. Right? And it ensures primarily that my faculty have real-time information in their classes, that they're not, you know, they're not missing students that transferred in or they can't give a test because not everybody's in there or this kid's in their wrong class. Again, going back to that mentality of it's not ExamSoft's fault, it's not Blackboard's fault, it's not the computer's fault. Right? Uh, and that was that's really important because we don't let people say, oh, you know, ExamSoft didn't didn't synchronize or didn't work right or Blackboard didn't work right. We don't let that happen. Uh, one of the nice things we do on the flip side is when teachers put in their ExamSoft um, tests when they grade them, um, we'll bring them over to Blackboard. We are in the process of trying to get Blackboard to be our one-stop shop, as I said before, for grades for um, you know content information we want to get it in there um, and uh, with the building block it's it's easy enough that we can push grades right from exam stuff in the blackboard uh, whether you know select an existing grade you know a grade column or we're going to do a um, a um, some you know an existing column doesn't matter um, this makes it this makes it really easy um, and this, the teachers will they'll do whenever, okay? Because as long as they do it today, what will happen is then tomorrow, tomorrow morning at 4.30, Blackboard will update their Power School or their Power Teacher grade books, okay? So that's less information they have to type in. We are moving t in a direction where we want to just push one grade from Blackboard to Power School every night, and that's their current quarter average, okay? So that would force the parents not to look at Power School. They're just going to look at Blackboard. Right? And having the exam soft component in there makes a lot of sense because now um, we can push. Um, I don't have to worry. Teachers don't have to worry about typing grades. Uh, they have exam soft open in one screen and then black one the other and transition errors and all that that pushes those grades in so that the following morning it'll go into Power School. Okay. This, I mean, it seems like a lot. I, I kind of get that. Um, this. The biggest thing was that this had to be thought out. We had to really think this through and make sure that we weren't going to make any mistakes. We made sure the data mapping was right. Um, the 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 power school to Blackboard took a couple of weeks because you know, again, I didn't want you know if a course was this or a student was this in power school, we had to make sure it went up exactly as we thought it would to Blackboard. Doing that piece made the exam soft to Blackboard part and vice versa even easier because now I've got, you know, once I know that my Blackboard data is right, I, I literally, I can tell you, I've not put in exam soft data since we finished the, we put in the building block, which I think was around late September, maybe early October. I have not populated exam soft. I haven't manually done anything in terms of putting in a student or um, changing courses and all that. It's there. And I know it works because I don't hear any complaints. You know, oh, I'm not in this class. I'm taking a test right now. Um, it's there. Right? And if there is an issue, it might be on the Paris to the Blackboard side, not so much on the Blackboard to exam soft side. So, you know, if I can, the, the most important thing is, is really to, to think about what's a student, what's a course, um, how does my data, how do I want my data to appear, what information am I moving over. Um, do I need to move teachers as well? You might be in a district with 10 buildings, so it might make sense to move teachers. Okay? Um, do I want to push data you know, back from one to the other? Um, if this wasn't difficult to implement, I think the biggest part was thinking it through and then testing it, making sure it was right. Okay? We'll, we'll take a test in, in ExamSoft. You know, let's push it to Blackboard, make sure that it comes over correctly, which it did. You know, there was no issues with that. Um, and then let's maybe test it again. But we weren't, it wasn't like we needed months and months to test this. We would do a couple of assignments. I saw the results that I wanted. Okay, 
um, then let's get this information out to the faculty. Um, in terms of spreading that information, we would push, uh, you know, uh, we've had videos that we make for the faculty. They will use exam soft resources. I would send them instructions uh, that, you know, either exam soft instructions directly or stuff that I would write with screenshots as detailed as possible. This is how you, you push data, um, you know, from exam soft to Blackboard. Um, this is what you can expect uh, every morning. You know, if you if you know you have a new student in your class and they're not in exam soft, you need to let me know because there was something didn't happen the way it should have at some point in the process overnight. And that happens from time to time. But, um, you know, we made sure that the faculty were very aware this is how you need to do things, this is the process, and the process wasn't that difficult, but really, here's the process, now take some time to, to work on it, to try it yourself. Um, what's the worst that can happen? You, you import a grade, you do it wrong, you delete it, you try it again. You know, there really wasn't, there's not, a, there's a very low fear factor here, and that's what we try to, to impress on them, too. Um, the whole rationale for this is I'm trying to make my teachers' lives easier because now they don't have to worry about getting students into their class or, um, you know, what if a student changes classes, um, what, where, do their, where are their tests and whatnot. It, it's all done for them. So they can concentrate on the teaching part, you know, on the content creation part, and, you know, my office is the one that handles all the back-end stuff, so they don't have to worry about that. So, um, I will, you know, this is not, this wasn't meant to be a super long because it's very nerdy, um, but I certainly will, will open for, um, for questions if someone's got, um, you know, we don't have to, and I, I said this, I generally say this, we don't have to end our discussion here. If there's something that you think of in a, you know, a day or a week or a month or you want to converse on this further, um, you know, I'm certainly open to, uh, contact, whatever, if we want to do um, virtual, if you want to call me on the phone, email, whatever, um, you know, I think that's, that's, that's fine. Because having someone to talk it through, you know, would be helpful. Hey, I'm thinking about doing this, or am I on our track, or hey, I use a different, I use Genesis, or I use Skyward, I don't use PowerSchool, can I still do this, you know, and then we can kind of talk it through. Um, so I'd be certainly happy to do that. Um, but at this point, too, I'd be happy to take, you know, if anybody's got questions or comments, um, I'm certainly happy to take them. Wonderful. Thank you so much, Al. Uh, now is the time we're going to go ahead and open up the forum to for a, a Q&A. So if you do have questions for Al and his processes, now is the time to go ahead and type them into the questions area of the GoToWebinar control panel. Uh, we'll take as many as we can uh, within the time that we have available left. Um, so the first question that we have come in, Al, is what type of faculty buy-in did you have to have to set all of these processes up? Um, we, and I'm not afraid to say this, we, we were not really traditional in terms of our, how we implemented. Uh, you know, we did exam soft in March and we did Blackboard for, for this year. There really wasn't a choice. Uh, we didn't pilot, we didn't do, we didn't test. Uh, we knew this is what we wanted, um, and we, we went and we did it. Um, was everybody, you know, rosy peachy when we first did it? No, because there was a, a learning curve. Well, how do I get my tests that I've given for 15 years that I've got a Word document, how do I get that into ExamSoft? Um, what, what do you mean I can't just push a button? Um, but once it started to roll, and then once we the, the support we're able to do with this same stuff I'm talking about on the back end, then it's, oh wow, this is this really makes things easy for me. I don't have to enter grades twice, or I don't have to you know worry about kids moving in and out. Um, we try to show them that you know there's a lot of cool things you can do with all this stuff. Um, but it's not going to be something that we're going to maybe test and then pilot and then say, okay, you only have to do you know maybe one quiz this quarter. It was full blown. We st we told them in, in March, this is it. Your final exams would be administered in this format. Um, was I the most popular kid on the block? No, and I'm probably still not the most popular kid on the block. But it really, it really, people are are, are kind of quietly surprised, and they might not run up to me and say, "Hey, wow, this is wonderful." But I do hear that you know this has really made a difference, and not only in how uh, I test and how I assess, but how I grade. There are people that 
they're more efficient when they grade, and they're also like commenting more when they grade. Um, they're providing more feedback than they would if they were writing it on paper. So um, it, it, I wouldn't say it's been a struggle, but it's it's a challenge, you know, because it's something new. But you know, we're in it now. Since you know, we're in it. What six plus months? Uh, midterms are coming up in two months. This is what we're doing, uh, you know. And I think it's I think it's worked well. I wasn't initially I'll be truthful. I was initially kind of reserved about, wow, we're just going to force this, but you know what? It worked. It worked, and it, it's because this is the way the world moves. You know, we're, we're trying to be, if we're a college preparatory school, you know, I teach at two colleges, and all my tests are done online. So we, I think we're doing our kids a disservice if we don't prepare them in this kind of manner in high school because they're going to certainly get it in college. Okay, great. Next question is, were you the driving force behind purchasing or using all of these applications, or did you have direction from the administration as well? Um, I'm part of a um, a team, and I don't say that lightly. There's um, there's at least four of us that are between teachers and administrators that kind of work together when we when we do this kind of stuff. Um, we we went out, we looked at other schools, and we looked at another school that was using ExamSoft. Uh, we were very impressed with that, how it was implemented, and how they were using it. Um, and we're not the type to let's, you know, let's, you know, let's spend six months thinking about it. We went for it, we had budget for it, and we did it. But we talked about it with one another. Um, you know, we we had the, a couple initial conversations with ExamSoft that we involved our administration and some teachers with, you know, and we did it, you know. Yes, I was. I, it wasn't just me. Um, I was sold from the get-go. Um, but I think when you know you have four, six, or eight people going, yeah, this is the right move. Yeah, this is really good. It it helps much more than when it's oh the computer guy saying it's the right thing to do. Of course he's going to say that he's the computer guy. You know, we've got teachers from various disciplines or administrators or whoever are looking at this saying this is the this is the right thing to do. You know, we've been looking for something like this, and this is this makes sense. So, um, but yeah, I'm part of a team, and I and I and I don't say that lightly, like I said, because there's a bunch of us that generally we all kind of, although, yeah, we all make consensus decisions. We all throw stuff off of one another. This is what I'm thinking, or you know, I want to do this. Well, oh, here's a loophole, and we kind of bounce things well off of one another, and ultimately, I think we come up, you know, with good stuff. Um, for example, and then also for Blackboard. Blackboard was the next logical step for us for learning management because what we had, with Edline was a good product, but it couldn't do the what Blackboard can do. Um, so you know that made sense, and also from the exam software perspective, being able to communicate back and forth, you know that made sense too. Great. Next question is: How quickly are you able to get scores to faculty and then to the students? Well, ExamSoft is, you know, as quickly as a teacher can grade it. Now, if you, when I teach, I taught AP Computer Science for 11 years. Um, and if I gave a multiple choice test and all the students were present, they got results back right away and they got the test back right away. And there, some of my colleagues, they don't agree with that at all. Um, but I look at it as you take a test now, you get your results back right away. You can then go and, and do some, some, some feedback. You can go and look at your mistakes and learn from that right away in real time as opposed to waiting a day or a week or whatever until I grade it. Um, so I found that to be very helpful. I've, I've always been that kind. If I, can, if I can get your results back to you immediately, you'll get them back. If not every kid is present, you'll still get your number score. I'll hold off until everybody takes the test, but then you'll actually see your test. But with this, from you know, just getting exam soft stuff scored, it's a piece of cake. Um, once I score it, once they're all scored, I push it to Blackboard. So then the worst is it takes another night to get into Power School. But still, it, it's you know, there's when I first started in 2004, our rule was you update your gradebook once a week on Thursday, and you publish to Edline once a week. That was that was your that was our standing rule. We can't afford to live in that kind of world anymore, where we upload once a week. Because our parents, and as a parent, I don't want to know what my kid did last Thursday. I want to know what their grade is right now. I want to go on whatever my LMS is or my SIS and go, this is where my, my children stand. Boom, 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 right here. And I think that that becomes a driving force 
for me as a teacher because the parents want to know, the kids want to know, I'm not going to sit on this stuff. And I have now the technology available to me to get that out much quicker. And I know a lot of my colleagues are in agreement with that, that the I don't I don't spend hours upon hours reading physical paper and writing on it. I make comments, um, you know, uh, I type my comments, and as soon as they're there, they're done. You know, and then the kids see that right away. So and that that's me, but, you know, I know some agree with me, some don't, but I think that's the technology is there to allow us to do that. Next question is, are you still using paper or Scantron for any type of testing, or is everything electronic? Um, the Scantron machine disappeared. I did not take it. I, I don't know where it is, but it, it, it just it, it left the faculty room. It's gone. Um, and I tell you, first of all, I love going in there and not hearing like that popcorn sound from the Scantron machine. Um, so teachers can still, if they you know, if they really want, um, they could give, if they're giving something short in class, they could use paper. Some still are holding on to that. Midterms and finals are absolutely exam soft. Uh, big tests should be exam soft. Blackboard has the testing capability, but it's not, I don't like it. And I don't want to say anything bad about Blackboard, but I know as a teacher, I would much rather have a more secure environment. You know, when I test in college and they're in the lab, they could look over one other's shoulder and, you know, see the same questions. I don't like that. I like the you know secure format. Um, we're getting to a point, and even before we have to say, okay, you're not going to test on paper. My reaction is, well, why would you want to? Why would you want to test or assess on paper, and then have to collect the paper, and then carry the paper, grade the paper, you know, record the scores, and then give it back to the students? That workflow, I could cut a tenth of that, and and all it is is you know, you, you submit something to ExamSoft, it grades it automatically. I then have to maybe grade essays or fill-ins or whatever, anything that it, you know, um, that it can't grade on its own, and then I'm done, you know. And the nice thing about it, too, is that now our students are starting to develop a portfolio of tests and whatnot, so when it comes time to study for exams, oh, well, I've got every quiz and every test I took for this class, it's, in, it's on ExamSoft. It's in one space, and it's cloud-based, you know, so there's no threat of me losing it if something happens to my laptop or my iPad. Um, so my, my response to, well, can I use paper, I guess, but why would you want to? You know, I, I do hear, I do hear, and I do appreciate the comments I get from, from math, especially, well, we can't, we can't, you know, I can't write out my work. But you know what? There are potentially ways you could have a student write it. You could then scan it. We've got some pretty good scanning capabilities here. You can then scan all that stuff. Attach it yourself. You know, you could digitize it if you if you wanted to. You know, um, I'm always trying to find. I think that's the the answer to that. You know, worldwide, the can I do it on paper? Why would you want to? But also, here's some ideas. You know, maybe, you know, maybe kids they 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 answer. You want to do uh, let's say an exam soft assessment, and they have to write out their work. Let them write out their work. Let them scan it, and let them you know make that part of the the you know what they have to hand into you. You know, and maybe not through exam, so maybe they have to hand it in if they share it through Google or whatever. But here's my work. There's other ways to digitize this stuff, you know. Um, but some of that requires just, you know, a little bit of outside-of-the-box thinking. Um, but I don't know. I, I haven't given a paper assessment in a while. There, certainly not in my college classes. Uh, I'm not teaching AP this year. Sometimes if they're getting, like, a one-question quiz, I, I, I would say, oh, yeah, then I'd think to myself, well, again, I got I to gotta copy, hand it out, take it back, carry it, create it. Can I do this on ExamSoft? It's going to take me 20 minutes to make a quiz where I could type it in Word in two? Sure. So, but, you know, it's, it's to me, it's just, it's so much easier to do it on, uh, uh, on the computer. Your, uh, your last, this last answer leads into the next question that we have, Al, um, which is what type of question types are available within ExamSoft? Um, standard objectives, you know, multiple choice, true or false, fill in the blank, um, essay. Um, there's a whole bunch of different ones available. What I like to try and um, model with the teachers is, well, why are you assessing? 
you know, that's the first question. Why are you giving the assessment? Well, I'm going to assess you knowledge. Or how are you going to do that? Um, well, I'm giving this, this, you know, here's the test that blah, blah, blah. Is there a way that maybe we can make this different? You know, for example, um, for, for years, my world language teachers, it's been, you know, part of their midterm and final is there's a, a listening portion, there's a speaking portion where they'd have to listen to something in a, in a world language or foreign language and, and then answer questions. Well, one of my teachers in the spring took, let's say, six hours, recorded all that stuff, put the pictures in, so now you walk into class, there's 30 kids on their iPads with their headphones in, and you say, well, what are they doing? They're taking the listening part of their Spanish exam. You know? So they're, they're doing the same type of objective-based assessment, but they're doing it in multimedia form, and also, with that example, wait, Senora, I didn't hear what you just said. That's okay. You can play it back as many times as you want, as loud as you want, you know, um, to make sure you're you're getting it. Because when I took that test in the early '90s, it was you got you heard it once, and if you didn't hear it or you didn't understand it, you were out of luck, you know. So we're looking at the same objective type questions in a new way. Um, also, the ability to put in you know, pictures and whatnot, so, uh, you know, identify this bone, you know, or, um, you know, here's a here's a, a movie clip or something, you have to answer a question on this. There's a lot of now different things, and I also see, I don't have data to back this up yet, but I'm also seeing that students tend to maybe write a little more, be a little more detailed, because they're not worried about writing, not worried about, oh, my hand hurts, they're not worried about, I got to fill up a page. You know, there was that, I, if I don't fill up three pages or three pieces of loose leaf or whatever, then it's not a good answer. Where they're typing, they're, they're a little bit, they're editing on the fly. Of, oh, I didn't want to say this, let me erase this, let me write it this way. So I think you're getting a better product, too. And it's the same type of question. It's the same essay question, whether I give it on paper, whether I give it with, with exam soft. But I'm seeing that, you know, uh, I'm seeing that, too. Sorry, but, you know, sorry to get away from the question, but, yeah, there's, the, the question types are the same, but the way we're assessing is different, and then the product I'm getting in return is different. Oh, that's great. Thank you, Al. I just wanted to piggyback on that really quickly and say that uh, ExamSoft also offers a rubric solution, too. So if you have a more uh, subjective type of assignment, whether that's a presentation or a research paper or a group project, uh, you can also use the rubric solution to have a more objective type of assessment process for that subjective assignment. Um, can last I, question I, is... Sorry, Stephanie. Can yeah. I just piggyback on your piggyback? I find yes, as, as, as a teacher, especially in my college classes, uh, and I use the, the Blackboard rubrics. We don't have exam stuff. I'm using Blackboard rubrics. I find that I comment more that I have a rubric electronically. Uh, I'm, I'm, you know, I'm much more willing and able to comment on student work because it's easier to do it as opposed to if I have to write it, the first thing I get is, I, I, I don't know what this says, I can't read your handwriting because my handwriting is atrocious. But I find that I will comment much more and be more detailed in my comments because I have a solution available to comment with. So that's something to keep in mind too, that you know that, that rubric, electronic rubrics, I, I feel as a teacher I can comment with. Yeah, absolutely, completely agree. Uh, last question we have is, uh, how do you deal with security for the iPad testing? I don't worry about it. And that's probably, that's another one of those things that's a worrisome answer. But if you have, um, I, I, if, if you get a chance, you've got nothing better to do, go back to my webinar in July, I show some pictures of what our gym looks like, and those are with PCs. But imagine 200 kids, or a classroom of 30 kids, everybody's iPad is flat on their desk. It's, I would have to be standing on top of you to see what question you're on or what answer you chose for a certain question. So just with iPads by itself, I wouldn't even have to scramble the questions or the answers. But on top of that, if I have an iPad that's flat on my desk and I'm scrambling the answers, go ahead, try and cheat. I'm at that point. You know? And I'm not saying that you know, someone might not be successful, but the, the mathematical probability of someone you know, being able to see someone else's screen, look and see what question they're on, what answer they've chosen. You know, the, the odds are, are, are pretty good in my favor as the teacher. Um, 
and then the other thing is I, I find that you know students can't really communicate well what like what's number four because my number four and your number four are two different questions and how do I know your number four and my number four are are the same and, or are the answer choices the same because I can't see it you know um, and there's much more you know I, I rest comfortably knowing that there's that security and that's probably one of the key things as a school we were looking for for a while to find something that's that robust that I don't have to worry about um, you know um, kids looking over one another's shoulders I also if we scramble the test I don't have to worry about if a kid missed a day of school you know like if they even if the if this kid said to them well all oh, the first five questions were they were ridiculously hard but that's a scramble test so they don't know your, you know your first five might have been your last 20 or, or last you know 25 to 30 whatever the case is um, and I find that that's helpful too uh, and I think our teachers take some comfort in that knowing that you know we're, we're keeping everybody honest you know and not to say there's you know cheating is rampant you know at Bird Gatwick but um, it, it's we keep everybody honest and I, I like that I think it's it's a, a, a an added benefit for testing like this and you know it, it really it made it easier to go to a solution like that where you know I have kids telling me I can't cheat it's, it's just it's too difficult for me to cheat I can't do it so you know that's kind of one of those that that you know that uh, that sells itself great and once again I'm just going to piggyback on that in case anybody here within the webinar is not an exam soft client and so you're not necessarily familiar with how our product works but uh, our, our testing solution is not an online solution. It's offline. It's a downloadable application uh, that locks down the, the student's device, whether that's a laptop or iPad, completely so that they're not able to access any other applications, notes, their wallpaper, et cetera, um, which prevents a lot of that, uh, you know, uh, maybe uh, wanting to go into other other types of programs to access information that the teacher or proctor doesn't want them to. Um, okay, so that's, that's all we have. Thank you so much for everybody's questions. This was great. Uh, just a quick reminder before we close out that uh, as you close out of the webinar, you will get a pop-up that will request for you to take a quick little survey. It's only five questions long. We would really appreciate the feedback. Uh, also, this, ha this presentation has been recorded. Uh, we will send out a link to the recording uh, within the next uh, 48 hours, so watch your email inboxes for that as well. Again, I'd like to thank Al for his wonderful presentation and for sharing his experiences and for everybody here for taking time out of their day to attend. We appreciate it. If you have any questions for Al, his email address is on the screen. If you have questions for ExamSoft, uh, our email address is info at Thanks again. Everybody have a wonderful week.